Hey everyone, it's Scott from StartMedia.com. Today we'll be covering super progressive web apps. I'm going to briefly be covering what a progressive web app is, as I'm going to have a longer video that goes into them at a separate time, but I'm going to be exploring the plugin more. Super progressive web apps is a simple plugin to integrate your, really to convert your website into a progressive web app. Super PWA has a really simple user interface, but it's also very action-packed. If you've ever run the Lighthouse test to see the check marks for what it takes for a progressive web app, this actually goes through and covers all of them. And it looks very complicated at first, but do not worry, it is not nearly as complicated as it looks. So a progressive web app in the simple sense is basically a way to install your website as an app on the user's mobile device. So what happens is, is if somebody goes to your website with Super Progressive Web App installed, they could be prompted to install it as an app. They can then choose to not install it as an app if they wish. And the benefit of installing an app is it effectively allows it to be saved on the device fully and have offline or L offline caching. So basically, if you have a website and let's say they went to your website and they saw an article that they were reading and they wanted to bring it up again, but they're in an area that has no cell access. So long as they went to the website in the Super Progressive Web App version, it will save the entire version of the website, HTML and all, on the device itself, allowing offline access. This is not nearly as useful for dynamic websites such as a news site because what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna have all kinds of new content and they won't get updated in the progressive web app until they revisit it when the web, when the mobile device has network connection again. That being said, it does still allow you to save it as an app and it allows it to feel more integrated on the user's device. And I'm a big fan of progressive web apps, but some things about this plugin in particular, I'm not too big of a fan of. Notably, it hasn't been updated in 11 months, which was quite odd because for the longest time it was receiving very consistent updates. There's also an add-on section, which I'll show you, but we're not gonna be installing it. Basically, the one addition, the additional add-ons allow UTM tracking, and the other one is Apple touch icons for the splash screen. If you're also targeting mobile devices that are on Apple, which you should, you're gonna need this add-on. And if you wanna enable UTM tracking, you can do so here. We're going to go ahead and enable the options and then we're just going to briefly touch everything. So when you install it, you need to set your application name. The application name is typically whatever your website's name is. The application short name is where the name of the app is going to be listed when there's only 12 characters or less able to be shown. So for instance, this website is on my staging and it's called Gutenberg Playground, but I cannot use Gutenberg Playground as the short name. It's too long. I could call it Gutenberg, but it kind of misses the point. So for those of you who have really long website names, this might be very difficult for you. Maybe use an abbreviation and then make a very good icon. That's a good option. So set the application short name to anything less than 12 characters. I'm just going to set it to Gutenberg just for the sake of this video. The description is just a brief description of whatever the app is about. It doesn't matter too much because most of the time nobody will be able to see this. You then have the ability to set application icons. They have to be PNG and they have to be exactly these dimensions, 192 by, 90, by 192 and then 512 by 512. Now, in those add-ons window, we also saw the Apple Touch icons. And this should basically do the same functionality. It will try to convert the ones for Apple and show them as well. So I don't have a thumbnail on here that is of those dimensions, but you basically just choose it from your media library. I have this giant 1920 by 1080. This will clearly never pass. I think it's a JPEG too. So this would not work, but you have to set a splash screen icon of your choice. And then naturally you hit your save button. Then you have a background color. The background color is the background on the loading screen of the progressive web app. So the progressive web app loading screen is basically just the background color and then the splash screen icon. So whatever icon you've chosen, if you have black text, you wanna have a lighter background obviously, so it's readable. If you just have a simple icon of a red apple, you can have a lot more functionality of what your splash screen will be. 
But again, I recommend choosing something typically of the lighter colors. Unless you have a white logo, then you'll need to have a darker splash screen for it to show. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to set it to black. Even though I just said everyone should set it to a lighter color, I'm just going to set it to black. Theme color, what this does is it actually allows two things. It will, on mobile devices, UI elements of the browser and the app switcher will be a color. So one thing is on mobile devices, particularly on Android devices, the top bar will be a different color for websites. And this is how you set that color. It will tell the device that you're browsing on that the address bar color should be the color of whatever color is declared here. If you're never sure what to do with, then I typically recommend saying it the same as your background color solely for consistency. And it looks like they recommend the same thing. Just keep in mind that your theme color is going to be in the address bar of the mobile device that you're on. So I'm going to say that when you're working with mobile devices, you should be testing the colors that you set. Sometimes on mobile devices, especially ones that are commonly using dark mode, the address may be of a darker text already and have be very, well, to be frank, it'll be very difficult for them to read. So when you're testing theme colors, you must always test it on the mobile device itself. You cannot test it on desktop, it will not work. So if you're in doubt and you have no idea what to set it to, just leave it at the default to white. The start page is going to be what it should almost always be the home page unless you want them to start on your blog page and your business. So the start page is what's going to be when they open up your progressive web app that you've installed on the mobile device. Don't set it to something that's frankly pointless. So don't set, send them right away to your contact us page because somebody who's bothering to install your progressive web app is probably somebody who's already reached out to your business and they're solely installing it so that way they can read your content or access the reoccurring news or just see where you're progressing as a company. I don't recommend that you set it really from anything from either the home page or your blog slash news page. Then there is the offline page. So I need to explain how the offline page works. When the user is on, a, on your progressive web app and they have it installed, let's say they go to a page that they've never visited before and they're in an area where they have no internet. What will happen is the user will be met with an offline screen when on the first installation, if an offline page is declared, that will be saved on the device. If you don't declare it, it will set it to your home page URL by default. This is not a good thing. If the user gets sent to the homepage, it's not providing them any useful feedback. If you're really going to get into the progressive web app situation, then you need to create an offline page. You can call it offline page if you want, set it to no index in whatever SEO plugin you're using, and then you'll be fine. But you have to have some sort of page that communicates why they're being sent to this page when they're trying to go to the about us page, because it will not give them any sort of feedback without the offline page being set. Once you've created the offline page, all you have to do is just set it in here and then that's where they will go if they have no cell service. Then there is the orientation of the device. So you can set the orientation of your app on devices. Nine times out of ten, this should be portrait. The app will rotate if the device is rotated on its own and they have the functionality enabled on the phone. But nine times out of ten, you should just either follow device orientation or declare that shown to almost always be in portrait. Most websites don't work particularly too well in landscape. And the worst user experience is when the user opens up their progressive web app on their phone, and then it's held in portrait mode because nine times out of 10, you're holding your phone like this. They don't want it to be sent to landscape mode. This happens with a lot of apps and I don't know why people seem to do it, but you should almost always leave it in portrait mode or set it to follow the device orientation don't ever set it to landscape. Frankly, I think the functionality should be removed because there's no reason you should be doing that. And then you finally have the display options. So there's a couple of, if you want to have it the most app-like experience, set it to standalone. If you wanted to set it to full screen, it will take up the entire device's screen if possible. So 
it will treat it almost like if you're play if you've ever played a game on your mobile device and the taskbar disappears that's what it'll do minimal ui will try to give minimal ui elements from a browser to give it a hint that they're still in a browser and then the final option will be to open it in the browser so that way it will it'll treat more like a bookmark than its own standalone app my typical recommendation for this setting is to either set it to standalone or set it to browser and here are the options if you're setting it to standalone you want it to be treated like it's an app but it's not so important that it should be overriding other ui elements from the mobile device so you don't want the taskbar being consumed by your website that's just stupid it's terrible user experience for them unless you have a true progressive web app where you're trying to say create an online editor there's no reason for you to set it to full screen minimal ui is just kind of like a very mixed signal that it's kind of like a browser but it's kind of not i don't really recommend using this standalone is the preferred and it's also the default setting of the plugin a browser is what you want to use if okay hey you want them to download it but you want it to act more like a bookmark with added bonuses that's when you'd want to set it to the browser setting where you know it's a website and you want it to feel more like a website when it's added as an app and they want it to feel like a more consistent user experience so either standalone or browser is what you should use most of the time I leave it on standalone, but if I feel like the standalone is just a nuisance for the type of site that it is, and it really just comes down to user experience and how I've tested it, and then I'll set it to browser. And then the final thing you wanna do is just make sure that the service worker was generated and is accessible. It looks like this one indeed was, and that the manifest file was included. It looks like both of them were, and they look to be functional. Now, progressive web apps are still very much a work in progress. Chrome hasn't added a real good indicator yet for desktop support. It is coming. There is better desktop support planned, and they kind of work now. There's a way to set them up on your desktop device. It's just not fully there, and you don't get the banner that you do on your mobile device. And I'm going to try and see if I can emulate that on here. And we're going to set it with a Galaxy S5 as an indicator, and I'm just going to see if it will pop up. So you're accessing the website. Everything is basically going to feel like normal, more or less, and you would eventually be prompted. Let me see if I can test that on my own mobile device. But it's really just a matter of getting it to fire on your mobile device. And once you add it to your home screen, then your progressive web app will be installed. So I'm accessing it from my Pixel 4, and it doesn't look like it's firing on these pages. It might be because it's in incognito mode. So that very well might be the issue if I just paste it in over here, opening it up. And okay. And then I can add it to my home screen. When you add it to the home screen, you're going to be prompted just like this. This is not very high production quality by just showing the phone, but when you add it to the home screen, it's going to show you the icon that you've declared, adding it, and it will add it to home screen. You'll give it a one by one because this is a pixel, and then it'll add it. And then when you open it, it'll open it up in Google Chrome, but it'll somewhat be treated like it's a progressive web app. Overall, it's a good plugin. If you're looking to have progressive web app functionality, then by all means, go ahead and try the plugin. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you have any specific questions, you can ask in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much and goodbye.